Yeah, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. It's a great honor to be here. And uh, many of you might have asked yourself why a company like Airbus is in a digital conference. And I can tell you, like many other industries, also aerospace is in the middle of a digital transformation. So just to give you an idea, in the next eight to 10 years, we have to replace 55,000 people out of 135,000. And of course, these uh, young people that will join us, they're mostly Generation Y and Z, and uh, we look at, of course, also a lot of new skills. It doesn't mean that we will give up our traditional uh, platform business, but we are in the middle of a transformation. And if you look at that, our world is changing, and I think it has accelerated, especially after the introduction of the iPhone in 2007, but we also see that a lot of our people are scared of the fast change that we experience everywhere. At least I can tell you, when I joined Airbus in 2016 and I was talking about uh, starting to develop more platforms, my people thought I'm talking about aircrafts because in the Airbus language, a platform is an aircraft. When they understood that I'm talking about software platforms, they were scared that I would redirect research and development money from hardware platform to software platforms and that they would have less to develop their products and systems. This is not the case, but what we didn't do in the past, we didn't use the unique data that our systems and platforms generate to generate additional digital services. And this is something that we are currently exploring, and uh, as you might have seen, uh, only 10 days ago, we went live in Berlin with a new startup called Up42. It's a digital platform for geo-information. One and a half years ago, we went live with a startup called Airbus Aerial, where we combine satellite data and drone data in order to provide digital services for customers, especially for like insurances, oil and gas, and many other industries. So we're currently in the midst of a transformation. But we use digital tools, of course, in all areas of our business. We use virtual reality, not only in order to test uh, different passenger experiences in different cabin um, uh, demonstrations. We also use it in our factories in order to do the, the checking on our manufacturing. We use them in order to help our people to put the bolts at the right place, to do the checking, the quality controls. So we use all kinds of virtual reality tools already in our manufacturing process. But of course, it's also very relevant in order to test all kinds of new passenger experiences for the future. So how to make it more lively and uh, more uh, comfortable for the passenger to be on a long haul flight. Uh, we also use a lot of manufacturing tools in order to be more fuel efficient. At the end, it's all about ensuring that we reduce our CO2 emissions. And as we still have the thumbs of rule, where we rule of thumbs where we see that the passenger flights double every 15 years, we have to contribute to make flights more efficient and less fuel consumption. This is an example also coming from nature where we use bionic structures in order to reduce the weight. And of course, this is only possible with the new calculation tools that we have in place and also using digital twins in our PLM process in order to develop new structures for the aircraft body. But also looking in the mid and long term future, we have to look at hybrid and electrical flights. Uh, how can we ensure that uh, we overcome the burden of burning fossil fuels and go into a world where we can be towards electrical flying? This is today still very limited by the battery quality, but we believe with steps through hybrid, we will be in the mid and long term be able to fly fully electric. We have demonstrated that already with the EFAN, a small two-passenger aircraft, but here you can see the next step of our development in our cooperation with Rolls-Royce and Siemens in order to develop a, a larger aircraft with hybrid propulsion in order to be less fuel consumption. What we also do is we look at how we can 
optimize aircraft operations. So we help airlines to do predictive and preventive maintenance by analyzing all the data that our aircraft generate. And uh, an aircraft like the A350 already today generates tons of data, and uh, we have on an A350 something like 250,000 sensors in order to collect data to provide us information about all the different sense systems on board. And this is something that we now are able to use with the airlines in order to optimize their maintenance service and the air aircraft on the ground, which is very relevant for the aircraft operators. This is something we try in Singapore. Today it's still very much limited by the speed of regulation. Because of course when you look at uh, different drone operations like drone surveillance, when you look at last mile cargo delivery, when you look at air passenger taxis, the problem is regulation how to fly in cities. So we test it in cities where we get a lot of support. And this is a demonstration that we currently do in Singapore. Uh, where we do sh uh, shippings from the land towards uh, the vessels in a three kilometer range, fully autonomous in a defined air corridor, in order to prove that this can be done in a safe manner and in also in a very efficient manner. So this is a service that is currently already ongoing in, in Singapore. We're very much working with uh, the regulators in order to pave the way for scaling, because the problem with all these business models, especially with drone operations, it is about having the right to fly over crowds, fly to out of line of sights, and especially um, making it possible to fly autonomous. Because today we still have a lot of areas where we can only fly with one pilot, one drone, and within line of sight. But of course, in order to scale, we need to be fully autonomous, and uh, Airbus has a lot of skills in this area coming from the military side, going now into the civil side, so we will be able to operate drones also in a safe manner in the future in cities. We also explore the platform business, because what we believe tomorrow is about ecosystem, it's not only about hardware platforms, so we have to also be able to provide additional services. Here, this is a service called Woom that we are currently testing in Sao Paulo and in Mexico City. It gives you access through an app to helicopter service to fly from the airport downtown. And I know if you have been in Sao Paulo, arriving in the morning at peak time, uh, at a rainy day, you know how much time it takes you to go from the airport to downtown. So be able to order a helicopter service via an app on the scratch is a tremendous advantage. And this is something we also explore together with a partner like Audi in order to have a needless, seamless, point-to-point uh, -point, uh, uh, transportation for the passenger. Because at the end, it's all about creating an end-to-end -end passenger experience, which is effortless, which is easy to use, and uh, of course, comfortable. This is something, I hope you have seen it. Uh, we have done a demonstration flight a few days ago. It's coming from a helicopter concept, but in order to pave the way for regulation processes, what we did is we use a drone propulsion, but uh, in the first step with, uh, with uh, several passengers, but still with a pilot in order to certify and prepare the option of have full autonomous flight in the future. This is currently built in Donauwörth in Germany, and we have also a drone test center close there in Manching, where we are able to test uh, drones in, in really uh, uh, good conditions. And this is a, a real uh, model that is flying already today and will be something that we will roll out in the years to come in order to certify first for pilot service and then later on for full autonomous services. This is another demonstrator that we are running in California. It's called Vahana. What is here differently is you can see it has wings and what it does, it takes a vertical takeoff and then it switches the, the wing and it propels, propels uh, horizontally, which is quite a challenge. We have done already several flights and we're testing continuously now in California 
to ensure that this will be a concept of the future. It has a higher range, it has a higher speed, and it has only a passenger capacity of one to two, but it gives us a lot of insights in order to how to certify uh, in a safe way drones that can be operated later in cities as well. So another demonstration that we have done is in the collaboration with Audi and, uh, and their design uh, study. And uh, this is quite an interesting concept because it combines the automotive and the aerospace industry and it takes the best of the two and combines it into a mobility concept that is very flexible and modular. So you have a passenger cabin that can be put on wheels and it can be put under a drone propulsion system, so it gives you unique flexibility in order to adapt to the different circumstances of the modern urban life. This is already the, you see on the left side in the corner, this is already pop-up next, this is the second generation. It's a lighter um, optimized model, which was uh, at a scale model of one to four, demonstrated in November in Amsterdam. So this was already a, a real demonstrator showing that it's possible to create uh, models like that. And we hope that uh, when regulation kicks in, that we enable our future to be mobile, be flexible, and to have these kinds of concepts in our urban area. Because it will give us a complete different lifestyle. Because today we have to live in cities to have all the comfort of jobs, uh, having access to additional services. But if you have concepts like that, you can increase your range. You can live in a suburb without having traffic jams in the, f in the morning and still be on time for your job and being very flexible in your life. And of course, it will also transform the cities that we know because today we have something like 13, 14% of the whole surface of a city covered by parking spaces. So in the future, we hope we can use some of these spaces for other applications that are more comfortable for civil uh, population. So a lot of new concepts that are paving the way for a different kind of mobility and Airbus is definitely trying to evolve in all these directions. So it, what is also important is it is not only about software and hardware, it is about enabling us to be also working in an ecosystem, working in an open ecosystem with partners, but it also shows that the skills that we have used in the past to develop our innovations and products and systems, they are changing. So we will, in the 55,000 people to hire, 20% will be data analysts, programmers, blockchain specialists, and artificial intelligence specialists. So we will change the skill sets, we will add them. It's not replacing existing skills, it's adding towards the skills that we have today in our company. And it will provide uh, the ability to make this vision of urban mobility life and help us to change some of the problems of our society. Thank you much for your attention.